Paris-Roubaix, the hell of the north, arguably the hardest and most brutal one-day race on the pro cycling calendar. It was always on my bucket list as a kid. It eluded me as a pro and I never made it to the start line. And if I'm honest, that's always been a real regret. So, Physique found out about this though, decided to invite me along to ride the route with World Tour Squad as you deserve Citroën as they do their final cobble check before the big day. The kid inside me thought, brilliant. The responsible adult thought, are you, are you sure this is, a, this is a good idea, Connor? Will I survive? Will I wipe out the entire team and embarrass myself? Have I any resemblance of form left in these legs? Wish me luck. I'm going to hell. My poor, poor legs. My arms are just in full cramp. I've been dropped. The 119th edition of Paris Bay will be 257 kilometers long, with 54 kilometers of grueling cobbles spread over 30 sectors. The Azure Desert squad won't be riding the whole course today, just the middle part, where the key race selection is traditionally made and the bulk of the cobbles are found. We'll start our ride 140 kilometers out from the finish in Roubaix at sector 26. Those sectors count down until the finish. Sector 30 being the first one tackled, one being the last. We'll finish our ride after sector 11 with 48 kilometers to go. Along the way, covering 15 sectors, including two of the three worst, the infamous Forest of Arenberg and the Mons on Pavel sectors. Last year, we saw Lizzie Dargham conquer the epic conditions in the women's race and Sonny Corbrelli take an emotional victory in the men's. Roubaix always proves to be one of the best races to watch of the year. And don't forget, we'll have all the action live, on demand and ad-free over on GCN+. Hopefully, you'll see the Azure Desert team if a 6 for 8 idiotic giant doesn't land on top of them. This is a key last chance for riders to test out their bike setup over some of the roughest cobbles going. Paris Bay always sees new equipment emerge to give riders the best chance of tackling those stones in the best way possible. And while I'm here, I'm going to have a snoop around Azure Desire's mechanic truck, see what their strategy is going to be for the race, tyre pressure, what the bike setup's going to be, bar tape. I'm also going to look at Physique's new Vento Argo 00 saddle, see how the riders are preparing for this big race. Either way, I need to start getting my kit on because they're uh, Time is of the essence here and the ride's about to begin. Better make it to the start. We're off. So I have roughly 90 kilometers to try and hang in with the team, finish the ride with the boys. The challenge is essentially to try and not get dropped. Of course, this isn't the big day. We're doing this three days out from the actual race, but still the guys are gonna be doing a big final effort ahead of Roubaix and make no mistake, this ride is gonna be full gas. I've got my work cut out. And if I get dropped, I'll never hear the end of it. Okay, we're about to get going. Things are about to kick off. I'm pretty nervous. Mainly because Azure uh, have brought a really strong team today. Ex winner Greg Van Avermaet, classic theatre, Oli Nason. My work's cut out. It's going to be pretty fast. Got through the old butterflies fluttering. One rider I am happy about being here is Mickey Sharp. Nearly as tall as me. He also said he raced yesterday, so he's a bit tired, which is a proper good thing. Anyway, wish me luck. Let me know down in the comments how you think I'm going to get on. Think I'm going to last or not. Nobody deserves to. Give me a bit of support as well, please. Okay, see you out on the road. Let's get going. The team weren't waiting for anyone, though, and the ride got going sharpish. I got settled into the wheels and soon graced the team with some scintillating conversation. I think I have the same tyres as you guys. There wasn't a whole lot of time for conversation, though, because I was about to get a big shock.
We started the ride. Nice and easy to begin with on the tarmac. Beautiful day. I was quite enjoying myself. Then we hit the first cobbled sector. I forgot how tough these cobbles are. In good condition today, but a bit muddy, a little bit wet in places. You just have to concentrate so much. And I was going full just to, just to stay with the guys. First one down, another 14 sectors to go. Arenberg's about 50k away as well. Just realizing how hard it's gonna be. The cobbles were coming thick and fast and the team showed no signs of slowing. I thought I'd catch up with some of the Azure Desert team leaders to find out the importance of these recons at Roubaix. Uh, the most important part of these recons is uh, the circumstances. Like, last Roubaix hasn't been that long and we all remember what it looked like. It was very rainy, wet and today, I mean, it's grey but it's, it's nice weather. We had 20 degrees. It's a whole other race. It's, uh, the parkour doesn't look anything like the one we had last year in, uh, in fall. So, just that part is very important. And also, uh, these roads, they don't have daily traffic on them. Whereas the, the, the Belgian classics are cobbled sections, people live there and, and use those roads every day. Whereas here, only farmers use them and, uh, and Les Amis de Paris Roubaix, they clean them up every year and they get a bit worse or better every year. So it's good to check it out. Okay, so we're about 22K in. Had a quick stop just to check tire pressures. Guys are experimenting a bit with their the setup, I'm taking the opportunity to catch a breather. I'm like, pretty tired already, actually. You don't see it on TV, but the cobble sectors do drag up. It's not just the stones that are hard, it's the actual slope of the sectors and really having to push on. They're obviously taking it easy in between each cobbled sector and I'm catching up there, but I'm going full gas to keep up on the cobbles. And there's a bit of mud around, a bit slippy. I'm having to watch myself. So far, so good though. The mood was relaxed. But for me anyway, I knew that wasn't going to last. Okay, so we're starting to approach Arenberg. This is real key selection, big part of the race. Mainly where the big move goes, where the riders are potentially going to win. They're going to go clear. Hardest sector in Roubaix, in my opinion. Dead straight line, worst cobbles imaginable. Some of the biggest names in cycling come a cropper here. For me, uh... Arenberg is always key point, first big key point of the race, so it's good to be there and in good position. Wish me luck. My arms are just in full cramp. Oh. I'm hanging on by the skin of my teeth. That was absolutely horrific. Just about kept the guys in my sights. I need to do some work now to rejoin them. A few mechanicals there, the stones are just so big. So, so rough. And you can see why those cobbles just cost your equipment so much and why you really need to focus on it. Now yesterday, I took a little wander around the edge of the mechanics bus See what tactics the team are using to help their riders come race day. Okay, so I'm outside the Azure Desert team mechanics truck, just getting a little snoop around, seeing what's going on. It's really interesting to see what the team are doing to the bikes to give the riders the best chance possible. Bar tape, big point of discussion. We changed the handlebar, the handlebar tape a little bit thicker with a little bit of gel, or you can choose both. Uh, two times the handlebar. Depends a bit the rider. I prefer to ride the, the handlebar with a little bit of uh, extra gel underneath. 
Most of the team are using the Physique Vento Solocush bar tape, so that's a sticky surface. Really good for the cobbles because you're not going to lose your grip on the bar, so important when you're bouncing all over the place. And most of the riders too are getting this bar gel just on the top, just to shock absorb really. Save the forearms, save the hands as much as possible. So I've got Ollie Nelson's bike here on my right and Greg's on my left and it's really interesting to see the difference in the wheel choice, the tyre choice. Uh, Ollie's gone for a tubeless setup, Greg's gone for traditional tubulars. Um, I've been told by the mechanics, Ollie's gone for around four bar in both wheels, Greg's gone for five bar, both wheels in the tubulars. Um, and you see tubulars come in more and more now. The riders are going to be experimenting with the pressure as well on the cobbles, that's what the recon ride's about. Trying to go as low as possible without the rim hitting the cobbles. It's tough though to get it right, and if you do get it right, it is a massive, massive help on the rough stuff. Saddle choice, another important one for Roubaix. You want to be sitting as comfortably as possible. I have a full carbon saddle. You would think it's too stiff, but uh, the physique saddle is also pretty compliant, which is very nice. Both Oli and Greg have opted for Physique's brand new Vento Argo Zero Zero saddle. Oli's gone for the narrow width 140 mil, which weighs in at 134 grams. Greg's gone for the wider uh, width, which is 150 mil, weighing in at 139 grams. Now it's made of a full carbon shell using Physique's Mobius uh, rail system, so it's like an infinite rail running all the way around the saddle. And Physique say this helps to improve comfort and relieve pressure on your sit bones because you avoid having to put the rail right here where you usually be sitting. One of the benefits for Roubaix is the fact that it's a short nose saddle, which have really grown in popularity in recent years, allowing you to get really far forward in your position whilst relieving pressure where you don't want pressure to be. It's also, as you say, you've got this low profile cushioning, which is also non-slip, so it really keeps you solid as a rock, perfect for Roubaix, when you really want to whack down the watts, keep as solid as possible on your bike. The mechanics have also put this grip tape on the bottle cages, try and keep bottles in. You really don't want to lose your biddens in the Paris Roubaix, because it's so hard to get another one, and when it's dusty, it gets so, so dry. I was also speaking to the mechanics, and they were thinking about using a cyclocross lube on the bikes for Roubaix, but they decided not to as they weren't quite sure how long the lube would last for. Cyclocross race is typically an hour long. Roubaix, you're talking over six hours. Also, last little fact, Ollie and Greg both gone for 54 ring outer chain rings. Going for the big dog. Anyway, that's enough snooping around. Time to get on, see how I'm doing on the recon ride. <laughs> I've been dropped. Plymouth is the longest sector. It's going on forever. I just need to get off it. Still in sight. The dust is just pouring at my lungs. It's so hard to keep my momentum. Ah, come on, Connor. On. Coming towards the infamous Monson Pavel five star protector to finish off. I've been getting distance on each cobble bit so far in the last uh, two or three sectors. And I've just been having to work afterwards to get back and just hang in there. So dusting. Once you lose the wheel, you're just out of it and you just bounce a long suffering. Not over yet though. Haha. <laughs> Oh, here we go again. My poor, poor legs. Last take to now. Just trying to stay. Got a lot of this wheel. Oh, it drags up. But I am ha, floundering like a fish in water. Or well, a fish out of water, actually. Fish in a little bit of water. I'm suffering, but quite proud of myself, actually. Whoa! Gravel. 
I'm so nearly there. So close to the finish. Just trying to troop on. Ah, my arms are actually in the most pain. They're just screaming, holding onto the bars. Ha. I haven't suffered like this in a long time. Thank you. Thank you. Merci beaucoup. Oh, I've made it. The last sector. Oh my goodness. That was some experience. So tough. I've only done 80K of the route with the team. The race is 257k long, it just gives you some sense of how brutal this race is. Fair play to anyone who takes it on and gets round because that is one hell of an achievement. I understand why they call it the hell of the north now. Oh, it was cracking that, so much fun. I think for me, Arenberg, that was the coolest. Just seeing the fans starting to kind of set themselves up roadside, the caravans there, the atmosphere is building. And that sector is just so, so hard. You are literally just bouncing all over the place. Oh, this Sunday is going to be something special. So cool to ride it though, that is there. Big thanks to Physique for getting us over here. That's an experience I won't forget. Oh, now I need to find the team. They dropped me on the last sector, so I didn't quite survive. But I'm proud of what I did, actually. I just about made it. I kept them within sight. Let's go and see where they are. I think I need to find a bid on as well. I'm not sure I'm, not sure I'm gonna walk straight for a, for a few weeks after that. Oh my gosh, I made it though. Dead chuffed with that. So hard. Can't describe how hard it was. So much fun though. Big thanks to Physique, as you deserve, Citroën, for having us. It's a real honour to ride with the guys today and try to survive to the end. Let us know in the comments who your shout is through Bay and what you thought of our ride today. If you want to shout yourself. Thanks for watching, everyone. See you in the next video. I think I need a massage now. I definitely think they should give Conor a contract on the team only for uh, his sheer size and, and uh, yeah, wind sheltering abilities. <laughs>